I believe we have some comedians in the cage. I'm Nicholas, I'm a photographer. Uh, and today I'm a photographer with a mission. And that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. Two years ago, my wife said to me, oh, actually, where are you? Hi. <laughs> uh, she's sitting down here, if you want to say hello. Uh, she told me, Nicholas, you have so much nice pictures. Why don't you do your own exhibition? And I thought to myself, Nothing happens. Why the hell not? I could make like 10 pictures, rent a small gallery, put on my scarf. Invite some friends and clients. Maybe drink some wine. One glass, two glass, I don't know. I think... Uh, that's, that's a good idea. Damn, it's, it's a great, great idea. The next day, I told my client, Michael, you are sitting here, and now my best friend. I told him about my wife's brilliant idea. And Michael, he looked at me, and he said, man, you gotta think bigger. Make a million pictures, make a book, make an exhibition tour around in Sweden and raise money to some aid organization. And as I looked at Michael, and Michael told me, Nicholas, I will help you. And I looked at Michael and I said, oh shit, I gotta get to work. That night I returned to my portfolio and suddenly this guy popped up. Do you know who it is? It's me 25 years ago. Can't remember. Yeah, I found more pictures. A lot of commission. Sorry, my bad. Uh... Anyone heard of this guy called MacIver? Well, I like to see myself as MacGyver of photography. When others see problems, I see solutions. Now let's see if the rest of the slides are in the right way. I found more work in my portfolio from times when I'm flying around the world shooting glamorous models. I also found more recent works, and this is pretty much what I do today, shooting corporate identity. Back uh, to my portfolio, I started thinking, who am I as a photographer after 25 years? What is my voice? And um, what is my mission or my goal? And when I'm flat on my back with no way to speak a single word, what will be going through my mind, my pictures, in a glossy magazine that no one even remembers the name of? Some colleagues of mine, they says, we aren't curing cancer with our pictures. The only job that cures cancer is the job that cures cancer. Then I found this picture in my portfolio. It's a job from the early 90s. Yeah, I'm that experienced. Uh, this is a good idea, I think. Let's make this the exhibition. I said to Sana and Michael, let's, let's write a letter to all the people we want to meet. And we shoot them all with their favorite word. And we can call it the word. 
and we do it in favor for children's right in society. Has anyone here been shooting with a large photo team? No one? Yeah, some of you. And then, you know, for instance, you have this uh, makeup artist and the assistant to the makeup artist. And probably be the assistant to the assistant to the makeup artist. And probably one or two dogs. And uh, eventually, after shooting that day, you probably all agree that you might have just one picture that you all are satisfied with. Uh, shooting the, the word isn't like that. Uh, in 20 minutes, we make um, a picture and we shoot a video with each participant. Uh, we never know the chosen word, and I don't rent or lend pink elephants if not required in this project. It's just uh, the human being and the word. And to make the shoots even faster, we never use tripods. Uh, the, the backdrop always held by an assistant, in this case, my wife. So let's take a look at some of the videos we made. Mitt ord är förebygga. Jag har medlat i konflikter och jag har kommit till katastrofområden efter humanitära kriser och eh, jag har känt mig som eh, brandmannen som eh, kommer efter att huset brunnit ner. Var när självverket hade velat vara där när rökutvecklingen började eller när mordbrännan sträckte sig efter tändsticka. Jag är trött på att vi ständigt eh, kommer för sent när kriserna och konflikterna har brutit ut eller när mänskliga rättigheter blivit etnisk rensning och ibland folkmord. Så jag tycker det viktigaste vi har att göra nu nästan i, i mänskligheten det är att förebygga, att eh, se de varnande signalerna, känna vibrationerna i marken när någonting går fel, vare sig det gäller konflikter, mänskliga rättigheter eller utveckling, och eh, handla, agera i tid. När vi gör det så sparar vi massor av liv, vi sparar pengar, vi sparar eh, världsorganisationers eh, rykte, FN inte minst, och vi sparar en hel del nattsöm. Jag tyckte det var fantastiskt om vi lärde oss att agera tidigt och inte blunda. Utan ändra på ting när de kan ändras. Mr. Eliasson var kind enough to give us 20 minutes before he was broadcasting his radio show Summer, Summer in Swedish. Here's a young fellow called Isaac, or Isaac. His favorite word is water. He's very concerned about the nature and the resources. There is only 3% sötvatten on the whole jord. Those 3% increase all the time. Therefore, I have chosen the word water. It's okay with the third one. Yes, I buy. Hey. <laughs> one of the crazy moments in this project was one and a half year ago. I was uh, meeting with my. Uh, my client Camilla, and suddenly she she whispered to me, Nicholas, Nicholas, look at that man with his big hat and that huge cigar. And I turned around and said, Oh, that's Mr. Kinky Friedman. He's touring in Europe right now. And for you who not know Mr. Kinky Friedman, he's a writer and a singer, and he's actually been running for governor, I think, twice in Texas. And he even has his own brand of cigars. And Camilla told me, you should have him in your exhibition. And I looked at Camilla and I said, sorry, the meeting is over. I have a new man with Kinky. 
So I went up to Mr. Kinky with my bad English and I said, hello, Mr. Friedman. I'm working with this expedition in favor of children in, in society. Would you like to participate? Sure thing, Mr. Photographer, but I would like to use a phrase instead of one word, he said. I'm doing interviews now, and if you can't wait, we'll do the pictures afterwards. And that was pretty much okay with me. I started running back to my studio, not far from the hotel, um, Clarion, to get my equipment and my camera. Meanwhile, I was trying to call Michael, my friend in, in partner in crime, telling him what was, was going to take place. And he didn't answer. I was running and I was phoning and Michael didn't answer. So I wrote him a message. And in 10 seconds later, Michael called me and yelled, Kinky, Kinky, Kinky! I got a spectrum on my wall, framed. I'll kiss your feet when I see you next time, Nicholas. And we got the picture in the afternoon with Mr. Friedman. So this is the word today. 150 portraits and videos, young, not so young, well-known, less well-known people, and all the surplus going to children's rights and society. We've been shooting a lot of secretary generals, editors-in-chief, chairman. And of course, a lot of other nice and generous people. Let's take a look at some of the pictures. This is Michael. Uh, he invited us to his home. We had tea in his kitchen, and this picture is made on the kitchen floor in his home here in Stockholm. This is Linda or Miss Lee, if you listen to music. Uh, this is shot in her new studio outside Stockholm. And this is Babben, the glamorous backstage before she goes on stage. This is Alva. She's seven and uh, she was going to a party with her best friends when I had the opportunity to meet her. And this is Michael, he's a touring musician. Love his home. Another musician, this is Stefan. He's shot in his backyard outside of Stockholm. Thomas, Thomas, Anderson, Johan, all shot on location. And if you look, Maybe you can see my wife somewhere. No, not on this. And this is Tina, author and illustrator. This is Bea in her garden with her favorite word, heart. And this is Krista outside his theater, Dramaten. And this is my favorite author, Mikael Niemi, shot in a hotel in Uppsala. This guy has a band called Block 44, shot in their backyard. And this is Michael, he's an actor, shot in my studio. So what do you say? This looks pretty much like a success, doesn't it? Meeting all these people. But you need money and help for success. And all the companies we've approached, they all has, had turned us down. Uh, not because of the lack of heart, uh, but because of lack of courage, I would say. So we do this exhibition around in Sweden. We make the book. We finance it by ourselves and we launch it June this year. 
So I might ask you, if you have an idea how to get help from companies, please talk to me in the bar afterwards. I need all the help I can get. Or maybe Adobe will step up. Adobe, where are you? And now some of you maybe think, why, Niklas, why are you doing this? Two years of your life shooting 150 people. Well, because I want to share the word of words. I know how, how my life changed when I learned to read and write. I love words. I love the sound of words. I love the sound of crazy words. I, li I like words that are misspelled. I'm, I'm obsessed with words. And I believe too, if, if I act, I may inspire others to go live their dream and to act. So what are you doing with your time you're having right now? You can say whatever you want to say. So what are you saying? Some of you in here tonight don't even know how amazing you are. And you will maybe tonight come up with the best idea ever. So go live your dream. Just be patient. Don't rush. Keep on going. Transitions take time. But it's worth the wait. Finally, I want to thank my team, Michael, Sana. Thanks for listening. And if you want to support me in my mission with the world, you find us at foundedbyme.com. I just come up with another idea. When, I, when I'm done in Sweden, why the hell not, I take the rest of the world. Thank you very much. <laughs>